Good morning, guys, and good morning to you. Welcome to this Monday morning's Good Morning Tottenham Away episode. Um, it's a very difficult one, this one, guys. Um, the very next morning of the match, it's always going to be a little bit more. The reality of the situation, if it wasn't already known, is sunk even more. Um, six one defeat to Newcastle. Do you know what, guys? Um, I'm going to level with you after the first sort of five, seven, eight minutes, however long it was when we went three 0 down. I switched it off. I, uh, I couldn't watch any more of it. Um, I was supposed to join the guys. I was a few minutes late. I was supposed to join the the watch along, but. I I just just couldn't bring myself to to just watch any more of it after a very few minutes of that game. Um, a team that just did not. This is you know on reflection of it. Obviously, to do this video here meant I had to watch match of the day last night. To to, to otherwise I I wouldn't have even been able to discuss the game or even anything that happened during that game with you this morning. So it was important for me to to, to watch it to, in order to do so, but uh, a team that didn't even arrive at the game, didn't even enter Newcastle, nowhere near went out of the tunnel of St James's Park, crossed the white line to start the game. Nah, that didn't happen at all. It did not happen at all because I mean I know I tweeted a lot during 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 what was happening. Um, tactics, 4-4, four, four, whatever, 4-3-3 four, three, three that we played, we went to a back four. Um, the moment I read that team lineup and I saw in a back four that we had Dyer, Poro and Perisic, I knew we was absolutely in trouble. We, the feeling already from the morning, from when I did the, the, the video the following morning, the, the previous morning, sorry, Saturday, uh, Saturday morning, I, I knew, I knew, I woke up with that feeling, my God, I'm really worried about today. And I told you guys in the video that I was worried about it. Some of some of the comments were like, you know, I was being negative perhaps. And perhaps I was, but I'm not normally a negative guy. But the feeling was there and I'm not going to shy away. I'm not going to not tell you that that's what I'm not going to say differently because I'm worried about the comments I will get afterwards if I'm being negative or not. The feeling was already there. And then, obviously, what happened, happened. Um, but, you know, during that match of the day, um, Conte's words with like, post-match from Southampton were resonating in my head or going over my head, you know, how he tried to hide a lot of uh, the... the, the, the protect, almost protect the players, how... He tried to hide a lot of this, how how the things from last season to this season weren't quite the same and are progressively getting worse. Um, just what, you know, then he, then he left, leaving some proper truth bombs on everyone. And you think to yourself, after that happened, if Conte, what he said, which wasn't ultimately, it's like with every game that passes, everything that he has said is starting to be more true and more true and more true with every passing game. But in that post since Southampton, and after laying those bombs that he did, you would have thought that you would have had players that would have said, I will show you, I will prove to you that what you said was utter nonsense, wrong, certainly on me. So every individual said, no, you might have been right about a few players, certainly not me. Now, guys, since then, honestly, how many players, how, n name them, how many of those players since Southampton game have, has proved, have proved what he said to be wrong? Kane, maybe? Maybe Kane? Benton Cole before he got injured at Leicester? But outside of that, if you think of the squad, the, the, the amount of names that were in that squad, we're mentioning two players here. Maybe a third, a little bit son, maybe. I don't know, guys. I'm just asking you.
but how many of those players since that happened have given anything to this club have given have done have justified any kind of performances have justified the name in the team for the following game have justified to be confirmed for next season's squad roster whatever you want to call it how many of those names would you confirm this season for next season we need to have a mass clear out right and that's just the players stellini and masons it sounds like fortnum and mason we've got like a new shop name now stellini and mason um i don't blame them and i always i'll stick by it now on the, on the morning of the 6-1 I do not blame Stellini, Mason, or any other coaches. I'm not, I don't blame that. I, I will refuse to blame two novices that shouldn't even be where they are right now. They shouldn't. A club captain who, and this is not me laying it on Luis because every performance is like that was atrocious. And I don't even blame Saar, who people have again, again given the stick to a 20 year old who ultimately came off after 20 minutes to, to make way for... I don't, don't go on it. Don't go in on the kids, man. Don't do that, guys. But a club captain who comes off at half-time, who justifies that I saw the match today, he's saying he's got a little problem with the hip. You don't go off, mate. You do not go off. As club captain, doesn't matter if you've got a little niggle, you do not leave the team at half time or for them to come out in the second half without you there you just do not do that but this is again why am i shocked for any of this so there was clearly you know clearly words had at half time there's no two ways about it and decided to throw the towel and not come out in the second half that's our club captain there right there and like i said i'm not talking about him as a player because everybody was to blame for that defeat yesterday but when your club captain throws in a towel, doesn't come out. He's the only player that doesn't come out second half. You've got to start asking a few questions here, man. But I'm beyond asking questions. I'm beyond wanting change at this club. I'm beyond wanting change for Tottenham. I'm beyond that. Now we move on to the accountability. I've given the accountability. The players have to take accountability for sure because they were out there for the shit show that they did yesterday. But beyond that, when will we hold this board, this owners, this Levy, when are we going to hold them accountable? If you think where we was this time last year, the feeling that we had this time last year, 10 months ago, guys, how much has changed? How much change of that? The change that we've had from, from, from you know, 10 months ago to now, I've not seen it at any other club. I mean, the demise has just been constant. The drop has been constant. Who do we hold accountable for that? I know who I do, and I won't, I won't break my stance on that. But what will it take? What more will it take? I don't know, guys. If you was expecting a video, guys, someone that goes mad, starts swearing and this, that, and the other, you're on the wrong, you're on the, you're you're on the wrong morning program. Go and watch someone else that does all that for clicks and likes and bits. This is a somebody that's watching it, is hurting inside trying to be rational and analyze things for how they are and i'll always be here guys to tell you nothing but the truth and how i genuinely feel before the games during the games perhaps when i can yeah yesterday was too much and i believe a lot of you even the ones that are disinterested or not watching spurs anymore this season or or, or refuse to engage or if you, there's no way you're waking up this morning you're not feeling that because deep down you're a spurs fan as much as i am for those who are not, well, like we we absolutely having a laugh at it. Bait team, bait club, banter club, as we're called. And rightly so. How can we not be a banter club, given what we just went through there in that, in that particular game? And since Conte left, it, since the Southampton game, which has been nothing but an absolute shit show. And what, what, would have, what do we have left? 
hope that Arsenal don't win the league. It's fun, it's funny, but really it's 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 actually quite desperate, guys. That's my feeling. Let me know yours in the comments below. Like the video, smash those likes, guys. Must massively important that you smash those likes before you shoot off. Hit the subscribe to Tottenham Away and this channel, Tottenham Away too. And we'll leave it with the sun's coming out. Have a good Monday. Have the best you can. Take care, guys. Mm -hmm.